how did you first find yourself using Linux? Like, I, I know you've documented the, like, you switching to Linux on your channel. Was, it, was that the first time you'd actually swapped, or had you used it in the past before? Or, like, just how long have you been aware of Linux? That, that is actually a question that I cannot answer. Okay. Because how long was I aware? It's funny. So I got introduced or reintroduced to Linux during my study program in like Linux server administration. And I was like, yeah, I already have heard of it, mm. but I don't actually know where. And I've also used it at some point, I guess. Like I, I used some commands. It's very weird. I have mm. no idea where I knew it from. But it was basically around, I think it was in 2020, something around that area that I was basically moving more towards Linux. Mm -hmm. And at this point, my old gaming laptop broke. And so I just pulled out an old one. It had Windows on it. I couldn't update it anymore. It was unsupported. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to install Debian on it. I'm just going to throw KD Plasma on it. It was a my first experience and it worked surprisingly well that was in january i think and shortly after like two months after i made my first video on linux okay why debian was it just something you happened to know about at the time or was there another reason for it uh yeah basically that so it was debian 11 i think okay if it was already out or, or 10 i'm not sure uh, but I, I knew it already. And since I'm a bit more technical in general, I don't mind installing an operating system with like custom partitioning and everything. You don't have to, but I did it anyway. And it's a fun installer if you know what you're doing. So that's the main reason why. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because a lot of people, they will have like got a recommendation from a friend or like something like that. Because by the sounds of it, you already have like a a fairly established tech background by that point. Mm. Yeah, I guess that a lot of people are just, what should I use? And do you know what's good? But the question is always, what what is a good distro? There are so many of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <It's> not... <laughs> well I've I've got like interesting thoughts on the whole like distro thing. I, I honestly I feel like a lot of the distros out there really don't actually serve a purpose in existing. Like, it's cool, people want to make a thing. Like, that's great. Like, go ahead and make your thing. But I really don't think most distros should be recommended to someone, especially if they're new. I think if you're, you're like, a new user, the best suggestion is go with something mainstream. Go with an Ubuntu, go with mm. Fedora, Debian. Basically, anything that has an established community around it, because... Once you know what you're doing and you know that you're running KDE and you know how apt works and you know all of these other little components are, it's very easy to go and find the specific resources for that, that individual component. But if you don't even know what KDE is, and let's say I put you on some like random, I don't know, some, some district that has like 100 users, finding any sort of resources about the district will be basically impossible. But if I were to put you on something like Fedora KDE or... Kubuntu, even if you don't know what KDE is, if you were to search Kubuntu how to do something, Fedora KDE how to do something, mm -hmm. you're far more likely to find resources that at least lead you in the right direction. Yeah. I, 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 I'm 100% there with you. <laughs> the, the main problem with what I see online is like, choose that desktop environment if you're a Windows user. But the problem is, People coming from Windows don't even know what a desktop environment actually is. Right. <laughs> so telling them you want to switch to Linux, then you got to pick a distribution, you got to pick a desktop environment. Uh, what do you actually want? Do you want to game? Do you want to work? Blah, 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 blah. The whole point is they want something that works. Mm -hmm. And the, like that's basically it. And for a starter, I represent agree, like just pick a mainstream one. Like honestly, it, it doesn't really matter if it's backed by a company or not. It doesn't matter if it's a canonical, if it's a Red Hat or IBM. For a start, just to get into it, just to learn about the operating system, or the, the kernel and the operating system and how everything is built up, it, it's a really good idea to just start out with something that 
most likely works and then you can always switch afterwards which a lot of people do once they start getting into it anyway yeah i am one of the rare people who just really don't like distro hopping i've been on arch since i started linux i've installed arch a couple of times because i had some problems that i need to like do a reinstall for but i have never been one for distro hopping like when i when i first started using linux i I didn't just jump right into it. Like, it moves, you hear, like, swapping to Linux, jumping right into Arch. Like, that's a... Why would you do that? But by that point, I'd already probably watched, like, three or six months worth of, like, YouTube videos, reading information about how to use Linux. Like, even though I hadn't used it myself, I basically had already immersed myself in that experience. And for me, it wasn't just suddenly jumping in. But... I, I know the way that I approached it is not the way that most people approach it. Like most people, they, you know, you'll hear someone saying, oh, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, the support period is over. I don't want to use the next version, whatever it happens to be at the time. I'm going to try out Linux. And those are the people who tend to just jump right in. And those are the people who I feel like it's best to direct them to something, something that at least has a community around it, whether it's the best thing out there. Like, you know, you can have arguments, oh, should a new user be on Ubuntu or be on Fedora? Oh, Fedora, they like to move really fast with things, whereas Ubuntu is a lot more conservative with changes. Yeah, all of that stuff's great, but yeah, I, I think you're right there. Getting, getting your foot in the door and experiencing it and then working out what you want from your system from there is a lot easier than just giving all of this choice to a user who doesn't even know what things they should be caring about in the first place. Yeah. And I think in, in, in the first place, like if you're coming from Windows, then many suggest that you should use something like a KD Plasma, something like a Cinnamon. <laughs> but I'm not really sure if that's the right approach because like preferences are interesting and Windows forces you into a certain direction, mm -hmm. which is kind of nice, like if you get into KD Plasma, so it's similar, but it's not the same. Yeah, um, that, like I'm I, under... I actually do want to sort of focus on that point. Because a lot of people will talk about if someone's coming from Windows, you want to put them onto a environment that is Windows-like, you know, Cinnamon, like KDE. I know the KDE people very much disagree that they're Windows-like, but <laughs> frankly, they're Windows-like. Whereas GNOME is a very different kind of like oh, way yeah. to interact with your system. What do you think of this idea of you want people to be on something familiar or would you rather put them on something completely different so they don't fall into the pit of a pitfall of thinking it's exactly like Windows and realizing very quickly that even though it kind of looks like Windows, a lot of the functionality they expect from Windows is just not there or if it is there, it's in a very different location. Yeah. That, that's actually a, a, a pretty tough one because... Like I, I know that if you put them into a familiar environment that they might feel more comfortable, mm -hmm. but KD Plasma is not Windows. And the first time I started noticing that like right away is that you cannot dynamically dock Windows with the meta and the arrow keys. Mm. Or I think, mm, no, no, you, you cannot. Oh, you can't do that. You cannot maximize it. Right, right, right. Okay. You, you, you can't maximize it. And that was the first thing that I noticed right away. And even though GNOME is a, a lot different in its overall user interface, mm -hmm. it's not that different from a Windows because, okay, you have a panel at the top and not at the bottom, but the rest is pretty much identical. Like you click in the left upper. Well, unless it's a button and then you have the, the side yeah, uh, sidebar. Exactly, yeah. Uh, but, but it's a bit different, but you have all the hotkeys there that you would usually know even some advanced ones like the, the old space where it brings up like the maximize minimize stuff um it, it's it's very mixed like kd plasma some elements you have the panel the you know let's call it the taskbar whatever mm -hmm. um you have similar settings on the other hand you have gnome which has all of the hotkeys and I got us a, a fuller experience since on KD Plasma, not everything is as tight in the desktop environment, like mm -hmm. calendars and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's very mixed and I find it hard to, to recommend desktop environments to newcomers, which is why I usually like pick a GNOME version 
which has been heavily modified towards Windows or KDE or something like that, mm -hmm. because then you have basically all of it in one place and you can always switch afterwards. Yeah. But yeah. it doesn't really matter in the end. Yeah, no, that that's that's definitely understandable. I it, you're right, in the end it really doesn't matter because like sure, even if you decide that whatever decimal environment you start on is, you know, the decimal environment for you, like it's something that you need to decide for yourself, ultimately. Like, I can... I, I am a big fan of tiling. And I will talk about yeah. how tiling is the better workflow until the end of time. I don't care that people disagree with me. That's fine. They're wrong. But this is something that you need to experience for yourself and work out what suits your workflow. And are you happy with a Windows-like workflow? Was the the way of interacting with Windows a problem you had? Like, how would I say it? Like, if you're on Windows, there's only one way to really interact with it. Every window is going to operate in the Windows-like way. But mm. when you come to Linux, there are options. And you might be happy with what's familiar, but it's only something that you can ask for yourself. Because we can talk about, with like tiling, for example, the power of having a really keyboard-driven workflow, but I can tell you how great that might be, but if you've never used it, it, it doesn't matter how great it might be on paper. It's mm -hmm. something that you still need to learn. Or, like, actually, a great example of this is moving away from desktops. People who are really big fans of, like, Emacs and Vim, if you listen to them explain how powerful these tools are when you've had, like, five or ten years using them, you think this is the greatest thing that you've ever used, and then you try it, and you're like, I don't understand how to do anything. I don't understand why anyone thinks this is good. But it's something that you need to experience for yourself. And I think not just try it out for like a day, try it out for like a couple of days. I think actually immerse yourself in the environment. Give yourself a couple of weeks, a couple of months even, depending on what you want to do. If you have a secondary machine, you know, clean install hardware. Don't even do virtual machine. Just go straight on hardware where obviously that's not viable for everyone and dual booting can be a problem and I wouldn't recommend dual booting to someone who doesn't know what they're doing anyway unless you do the way I dual boot which is unplug all of your drives and then install on mm. the drive and then swap them in the BIOS which is the safest way to do it but my point of all of this is you need to try it out for yourself and work out what you want from it mm. yeah Preferences are always hard. Like nowadays, I I don't even like Windows anymore. The Windows way. Yeah. No, not because not not because like I it's it's very unusual or something. But there is just some, just some some functionality that I now use that just isn't there. Right. One example, uh, like something like an overview, which mm. I use or, or I really like because I always have one hand on my mouse. So because I do a lot of editing, I do some. Yeah, basically with GIMP photo manipulation and all that stuff. So having being able to trigger that stuff with my mouse is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Windows does also have the functionality in some way. You have like the, the, the Windows tab key, but you cannot pull Windows from one screen to another, or at least not in Windows 10. And that, that throws me off so much. Like I tried it every single day when I'm using Windows and it just doesn't work. And then I'm like, eh, okay, it doesn't work. And all the all those things, life improvements, switching, uh, switching between desktops, it's just not as good. And I've learned that over the years that this is what I actually prefer. It's not something that when I was coming from Windows, I was first installing KDE Plasma and I had it exactly in the way that Windows was. Mm -hmm. And I tried out other, th other things and they work better, even though they were pretty un unusual at first. Mm -hmm. 